Hi, I'm Rick. Hi, I'm Oscar. I looked into Relay, Azure Relay, uh, last week because I was working with this guy and he actually um, was looking at how can we maybe um, still have some stuff on premises while we have the rest of our code and our applications in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And we would primarily like to not have a lot of holes in our firewall, but still we want to reach out into a local service and maybe uh, activate something in there. I had a similar experience because I was that guy, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, we. I, I was looking at like at one way at the problem. It was like, oh, another hole in the firewall during yeah. the migration. Um, and then we remembered, we used to have something on Service Bus, yeah. which was the yeah, SOAP, like WCF um, relay service. Yeah. Um, but it's still there. It's separated it is, from the yeah. original Service Bus. Yeah, uh, it's now called Azure Relay. Mm -hmm. And it actually has two different types of endpoints. So you can have either a WCF service uh, or even normal REST operations can be completely transparently uh, communicated through via service bus, which means that your local application could have a call outside of or through your fire firewall out to the internet, which is not a port that you need to open in most cases. Um, so that means that it's an outgoing connection from your on-premises and then you have an outgoing connection from your cloud and they can find each other by communicating through, for instance, a service bus. And yeah. that's how Azure Relay works. So in, in, in this case, we need a physical, it was a physical thing that we couldn't just lift up and put in the cloud. Yeah. So yeah. hard to migrate, still need a plan for that. But yeah, it that was one. doing physical things. So, But it has a REST API. And we were looking into like how can we hit that thing on-prem because we need to send messages through it. Um, and then, of course, you can route your traffic, set up uh, an endpoint, open your firewall, and you're hosting an endpoint. But this is a thing you don't want to just throw to the internet. Yeah, we true. need some authentication on it. And this used to be just internally pretty safe in uh, yeah, in some kind of environment. Um, and this was pretty handy in the end because what, we, what you in the end just want to do is just pull that endpoint that you want to use and pull that one to the cloud and not care about what's happening underneath. Yeah, true. And that's where Azure Relay actually comes in. So if you look at um, my screen right now, we have mm -hmm. a relay available. And this one is called RVDB Test. So as soon as you have a relay and you open it up, you can actually see the two different types of entities that you can have. So this is the old-fashioned WCF relay, right? Mm -hmm. That enables you to call into WCF services using Service Bus. But that was not what we needed. We actually needed a hybrid connection because that's the name of um, the solution that actually uses Service Bus. And then the cool thing is, if you kind of dig a little bit deeper, um, for instance, if you look at the shared access policies right here, this is the exact same way of defining access policies for your relay and your uh, hybrid connections, for instance, as it is for Service Bus. Yeah, because in the end, it is even a service bus namespace that you create. Yes. It's also, the URL, once you create one relay, it's like creating a service bus, but it's disconnected from the normal plan. It is, yes. And then uh, if you have the on-premises part that actually needs to call out to the hybrid connection, the connection string to call out is actually a service bus connection string. So the cool thing here is, in this case, we have two hybrid connections. We could even on hybrid connection level, specify shared access policies, which means that I can have uh, authentication on one connection itself for only read access, for instance, mm -hmm. or only write access. And the cool thing about that is that you can really specifically target uh, different parts of your hybrid connection to have different writes. So you could have uh, different applications with different writes in the in one specific hybrid connection, but you can also define it on relay level itself mm -hmm. if you want to. Now, looking at this one, we can actually see that we have an endpoint here, and the endpoint says rvdb-test, which is the service bus namespace. Mm -hmm. And here we can see that it's servicebus.windows.net slash video. So that from now on is the uh, REST endpoint mm -hmm. For a specific service that we would like to target, and that service so then instead runs of internal. that being a queue as we normally see it in that namespace, it's now an HTTP endpoint. Yeah, and then if you look at the entity path, normally um, 
if you have a service bus connection string, um, the entity path shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. But for hybrid connection, it does need to be there because it needs to know which specific endpoint it needs to target. So in this case, if we look in the code uh, that we actually have open right here, and let me open that up real quick. This is a, um, an example implementation from GitHub that I kind of tweaked to make it work for the scenario that I want to show today. Uh, but in the end, what happens is you create a hybrid connection listener. And as you can see right here, that has a connection string that actually just has an endpoint SB, which is mm -hmm. service bus. So this is a service bus endpoint. However, you do use a hybrid connection listener. So it's a separate class that you use to create that connection. So this part is the part that you actually put next to the resource in the network you cannot get to. Yeah, so if we, we want to draw a picture, you have on one hand something in the cloud that's up and running. Mm -hmm. You have a service bus hybrid connection thingy next to that application. Mm -hmm. And then from on-premises, you have a connection going out to that service bus. And then the service bus is used to connect the two systems, one running in the cloud and one running somewhere on-premises or in a private and, uh, private uh, cloud, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now, what we do here is we add three different listeners to connecting offline and online so that we can give some uh, feedback to the user. And what we do here is we uh, list out all of the headers for each request coming in. So the listener has a request handler, which actually means all of the requests coming in to that listener, to that mm -hmm. hybrid connection listener that we're creating. Each and every request goes through this code. And now in this case, what I'm doing here is I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to go to a local application running on port 5121 slash videos. Mm -hmm. So which that's, is, that's your hidden part where that's this my hidden application part. can only uh, yeah, get to? That actually runs on premises mm -hmm. in a private uh, network somewhere. Um, and that's actually, for this demo, just an application that runs here. And this is my entire web API, all of it in one. So this uh, is the representing the, the thing that we cannot reach. So yes. this is a default um, um, HTTP thing that maps slash videos. Locally, you can host that, from, but from my machine, I couldn't just get there. Totally true. Because if we start this, uh, and I actually set it to start both of the, uh, both of the projects, mm -hmm. I would almost say, of course. Now you can see that the hybrid connection um, console application is all already online and the server is listening. Okay, so that just spins up a socket on HTTP, yeah. so 443 and probably. it connects to the hybrid connection. It, yeah, under, on, under everything it connects to the HTTP, but it's just receiving messages and pumping that into, um, um, into the other part. Okay. Yeah. And then if we go to our cloud environment currently, then we can see if we go back to the overview that this one now has one active listener. So mm -hmm. the cloud already sees, hey, somebody has yep. started up a look an application from inside somewhere to locally. the cloud. This connection was made, it's and you only need 443 to, to go outside, right? Yeah, and that is normally an option. <laughs> um, yes. Um, now, if we go to the application that was actually running, uh, I actually changed that to be videos instead of the weather forecast, uh, we get a um, list of videos with mm -hmm. numbers and topics. These are our beta talks, right? So if we F5 this, and this is all on local It's a host, random list. It's a this random is, list. Uh, this is the weather forecast, the sample, right? It, yeah. it kind of is, but <laughs> now with topics and, uh, and numbers. But in the end, this runs local. So this runs local host 7121. Uh, as you saw in the demo, it was 5121 in the tool that I specified, and that's because I skipped HTTPS in that mm -hmm. specific scenario. So on 5121, we get that list as well. Now, if we minimize this and we go to, for instance, Visual Studio Code, we could have an endpoint that we talk to, which is in uh, the cloud. And that's, of course, our hybrid connection. So I'm going to say that this is a HTTP request. I'm going to do a GET. And this video's endpoint, which has one listener, has a hybrid connection URL. Let's copy that over, paste that in Visual Studio Code. So what we're doing right now 
is we are going to do a GET request on this internet-facing, mm -hmm. publicly accessible endpoint. And then... And just to be clear, you're using this now in the, um, the extension that knows, like if I give a URL and a GET in Visual Studio Code. Yeah, you this can is just also, REST client. Yeah, it's you could also paste this in your browser. Of course, uh, yeah. But it's nice to use here because you can actually see what it's including the headers we return. Yes, so now it calls out and actually it says uh, via our service bus endpoint, mm -hmm. we can get that the server is HTTP API uh, 2.0 and we actually get a request, or sorry, a response back for each of the requests that we do to this public facing endpoint, which my local application is actually answering. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about the fact that we also have a video on reverse proxy. I think a combination between these things, like knowing knowing the, like watch the video of the reverse proxy, yeah. watch this. And I think it will explain how the magic, for instance, in those uh, dev containers uh, in, in GitHub yeah. um, work. Like the code spaces. The yeah. code spaces. Like the, this is the magic where you can, yeah, you can pull systems apart into chunks and put one there, put one there and just host it as one so no one knows what, what you're actually doing. This is also interesting, of course, with well, what we were doing in the migration phase. This is ideal for migra migration scenarios, but also what you said. I mean, if you, if you want to build something cloud native, but you still have that one proprietary label printer somewhere in the basement. Yeah, it, that it's needs about to physical devices, yeah. unmovable servers for now. Um, yeah. Things that you cannot just pick up, put in the cloud, but definitely those physical things that in the end needs to do something there. You cannot start printing stuff in a data center. Nope. Then you yeah, well, need to send someone to get the stickers. It would, would be, be nice right. if we could, but then mm -hmm. where do we go? Yeah, but every everything that's the connecting, you will have an on-prem part. So going to hosting this small part, the, this example code, and you will clean it up a bit for, from the uh, example. Yeah. But just taking that, throwing that on a Raspberry Pi, putting that next to a machine somewhere, just opens it up um, for you to use in your cloud native architecture but still having all of the security in place with that you don't have to have your holes in your firewall uh, but also the fact that you use uh, decent security for your hybrid connection yeah because the hosting port which you're talking to is actually as your service bus yeah so everything is there to connect properly to that thing yeah because it actually like just like you said it leverages the power of service bus so it also leverages the type of Connecting to, mm -hmm. which means you need to have uh, a certain access key to access it. But I could also imagine, which is something I am going to investigate now that I think of it, I could also imagine that I can have a managed identity which has rights to talk to a hybrid connection. It will completely blend into your thing and you can use it as an adapter yeah. to, to, to make such components cloud native. Yeah. Next to the HTTP, um, we have the WCF connector. Yeah, so that's the, the different type of connection that you can create in the portal. So, uh, like we saw earlier, and this is something that I talked to you about earlier, that since Windows 11 with Visual Studio 2022, sometimes I want to switch Windows and Windows itself just says, nope, and I have to click the window five, yeah, six times before it actually right. switches. They will fix it. Yeah, they will probably. Um, but like, like you said, here on the relays, you have the hybrid connections on one end and then the WCF relays on the other one. But the hybrid connections, there are some examples on the GitHub side or yes. on, the, on the documentation side, actually, um, where it shows how to set one up. Um, and it, I think it has it for .NET and has an example for Node even. Yes. Um, but also WebSockets. Yep. So it's not just pure HTTP, it can also not be true. a connected uh, service. Um, so if you need some other port forwarding, like that opens up all the other scenarios you can think of. Um, so you can also use that. Like this is a really a simple example. Um, I would stop it, otherwise everyone could can now reach your local running service. <laughs> or not? I'm not too scared about that one. <laughs> uh, one thing that I did want to show is the fact that, like you see here, we also get metrics of what's happening mm -hmm. with your service. So that also enables you to maybe better understand how your locally deployed services are being used mm -hmm. because you can see what's actually happening right here in the environment that you're, you know and love probably as far as Azure goes. So this can all blend into Azure Monitor and have a 
completely holistic view of yeah and, the and you can drop ecosystem. in in the in the, the client you're running in between you can drop in app insights and all kinds yeah. of things to finally have some insight in what what is going on in the endpoint yeah if i compare it to um the 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 yarp we did a video on yarp um like this feels like the same but stretched yeah well of course if you look at yarp that is going to have a public endpoint that mm -hmm. you talk to yeah on the edge of your yeah, but it's network a, it's probably. a public endpoint from one side yeah it's reaching into something else and hosting it it's exactly what it is doing but with the thing is that the reverse proxy is now connecting from inside out and that helps and that helps in a different scenario so even though all these things and we have that with multiple services in azure kind of look alike or seems like this is the same scenario you will have those nuances where you need the other thing yeah true. and I completely forgot about relay service until we had this discussion. Yeah, um, and now it looks like it might be part of our solution that it, we are it, I, I looking think at it's, uh, moving forward. The the best solution we could put in there um, because the network guys don't want us to, to open up stuff. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Um, okay, so yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Yeah, check it out. Use it. Play with it. You might need it someday. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye.